mna 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 chimba nini mzizi gani mna chimba shumo they collect they digging the roots which is called shumo is one is getting from the ground they have a lot of water and uh, have a lot of nutrition so they can eat fresh or they can cook Since their lifestyle is so similar to that of our ancestors, the Hadzaibe tribe have been closely studied by academics. Professor Aldax Mabula at Tanzania's National Museum in Dar es Salaam tells us this is how humans have lived for 99% of our existence. Our earliest ancestors, including early anatomically modern humans or early Homo sapiens sapiens, hunted and foraged. They had the natural food, foraging for tubers, uh, digging out uh, tuber roots, foraging for different types of berries, uh, killing animals, uh, killing birds. And why? These sometimes are known, particularly the Hadza, they are known as the egalitarian hunter-gatherers. They don't store food. Whatever they collect, they consume. And if they kill a big animal, they cannot keep it for more than five days. They consume immediately. But their food is very, very nutritious. And evidently, it's not fatty like the processed foods many of us consume. In fact, I don't see one overweight adult or child amongst the Hadzabe. As well as foraging, the women search for small mammals and insects. It may not be quite the feast they were hoping for, but nothing is wasted. Nobako gets the lion's share of the roast mouse, though she does give a tidbit to one child. However, Nobako does take the lead in sharing what the women find with the men. And whatever they forage from the bush supplements what the men are able to provide from hunting. Some of it is cooked to make it tastier and easier to digest. Some experts believe early humans began cooking their food around 1.9 million years ago when they discovered how to make fire. This meant they didn't have to spend hours and hours a day chewing food, freeing them for other activities. The Hadzabe prefer to live like our ancestors. They've been offered housing and farmland by successive governments in Tanzania, but they choose to maintain their traditional lifestyle. I want to know a bit about these people. Have they they've been to see modern life, cars, houses? We see the barber tree, but the car and normal modern life than ever. They're not interested in yes. it. Mobile phones are very popular here in Tanzania. It's a good way of communicating from distances. How did they communicate? So they communicate from distances by whistling. Another aspect of Hadzabe culture is that they don't attach much significance to age. So this chap here has got a bit of a sense of yeah. humour. Yeah. What can he tell me about himself? Do they, do, does he know his age? 
They're not, they don't know. They don't keep a count of their age. Yeah, they don't counting age. Do they have any idea of age? Yeah, they don't know. Is this lady young or old? Old, she... old. Let me ask her, what does she think she is? What age does she think she is? They don't know. Yeah, I like that, you know, actually. Next time somebody says to me, how yeah. old are you, saying I'm going to say, well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> what did you say? How old are you? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying. <laughs> I've kept them all chatting long enough for now. This is a hunter-forager tribe, after all, and it's time for the men to go hunting. They go out every day, wearing the baboon skins to make them look and smell like their prey so they can get nearer to them. I'm given a little demonstration of this. The Hadzabe men take a great deal of pride in finessing their hunting kit. The tips are dipped in poison to make them more effective in killing animals. Haono, who's been very friendly and accommodating, gave me a quick bow and arrow lesson before the hunt. You know what? It's not as easy as it looks. This is very stiff. Straight. Keep my arm straight, he's telling me. Slightly at an angle. And away I go. Oh, that's not going to get me very far, is it? <laughs> it's difficult. It's much harder than it looks. I think you've got a better... You know how to use it better than I do. He knows better, don't you? Okay. Ah, oh, better! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank you. High five. You don't know high five. <laughs> As we make our way through the bush, the men keep a lookout for something, anything they can kill. If it rains, they show me how they can go into the hollowed out trunks of trees to take shelter. Wow, this tree can take a lot of them. Well, it's not raining, so I think it's time they came out again. The men are not always lucky, and today their luck was out. And although it's the women who gather berries and plants, when it comes to picking the baobab fruit, it's clearly the men who have a head for heights. Are today's Hadzabe the direct descendants of early hunter-gatherers? We can't be sure, but the Hadzabe themselves have always <laughs> believed that their ancestors are the very same people depicted in prehistoric cave paintings. But I want to make this clear. The Hadzabe are not an early form of humans. They are a modern community even if their culture shows a remarkable degree of continuity with early hunter-gatherers. Let's look at some of the evidence that we humans began in Africa. It was the Victorian scientist, British biologist Charles Darwin, who first made the observation that since the African gorilla and chimpanzee are most like us, therefore our common ancestor must have been African. Once Charles Darwin had made the connection, other scientists, archaeologists and paleontologists began to look for the evidence of evolution. The Leakey family from Kenya, Louis, Mary, their sons Richard and Jonathan, are all scientists and fossil hunters who've become synonymous with the field of research on evolution. They've dedicated their lives trying to work out the evolutionary chain from gorillas and chimpanzees to humans. Richard Leakey, now in his 70s, is one of the original contributors to UNESCO's General History of Africa, on which this series is based. It was the Darwin comment uh, that alerted people to different things, and in particular, the notion that we evolved worried people, the church particularly. 
But secondly, the idea that if we had to have evolved, and we did so in Africa, this was an anathema to many people who couldn't believe that uh, the purified, uh, pure white, blue-eyed, flaxen-haired people of, of the North could possibly have originated from the Dark Continent, and they were utterly wrong. But all of the major events relating to the story of us go back to Africa. We are an African animal, an African species that colonized and recolonized and recolonized the world in different times and in different ways. But today, no human can say they don't have Africa as a mother country. I want to see the evidence for myself. And so I embark on a gorilla trail. Gorillas are only found now in a few places in Africa, mainly in the Great Lakes region between Rwanda, Uganda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This is the Volcanoes National Park in the Virunga Mountains of Rwanda, where around 500 gorillas live in family groups, watched over by conservationists who protect them from poaching. I'm brought here today by my guide called Patience. Let's hope he lives up to his name. It's quite a hike getting to see the gorillas here in northern Rwanda. You've got to walk a considerable distance through lots of mud. But luckily I've got somebody who's leading the way and trying to show me the least difficult route. But hopefully in a short space of time I'll get to see some gorillas living in the wild. The one I really want to find is Kuhonda, who's the uh, leader of the particular family group I'm looking for. Patience, not so fast. I need to catch up with you. I can try to make it easy for you. OK, but thank you. Yeah. After walking for nearly an hour, success. Look, look, look. When you get this close, it's remarkable to see just how gorillas' movements and antics and expressions are so like us humans. In fact, we now know that the DNA of gorillas is 98% identical to ours. That means that the vast majority of their body cells are just like humans. Gorillas do not need to drink water. They remain hydrated from eating plants that are very moist. You see? Oh. It's water is. The plant they eat contain enough water. Gorillas are social animals. Like humans, they live in family groups and there's always one dominant male, the silverback. In this group, it's Guhonda, who you can see lying there, and you can see the clear strip of silver fur. Now, the male gains that by the age of 12. It's a sign of maturity. And Guhonda has been the leader of his family for many, many years. But he's now 45 years of age, which means he's very, very old and is probably near the end of his life. So Guhonda has been grooming a successor, one of his sons. We may now be sure that humans originated in Africa, but what is the evidence that we evolved from apes? Well, this journey of discovery takes us to Sturkfontein, north of Johannesburg in South Africa, where the first evidence of a hominin, a creature somewhere between ape and human, was found. In the decades since Darwin wrote his book, The Descent of Man, scientists like Kenyan Job Kibbe have been engaged in putting together a massive jigsaw puzzle of human evolution. My work at Stockfontein is more of a detective story. Uh, you're piecing clues of information from bones. And the first 
major evidence that you have is the bones themselves, the fossils that have been excavated here at Stackfontein. What they found is that there are many different species of ape men, creatures which are neither 